All right, you tubers, welcome back to War Thunder Ground Forces with the Angry Nerd. And today I thought we would take a look at the first tank that you can earn during the summer event. And that is the British cruiser tank, Grant Mark I. But before we get started, I'd like to bring your attention to the skin that's on this vehicle, Defiance 3 by Tiger 6. Now I will leave a link down in the video description to Tiger 6's live WarThunder.com profile so that you can find this skin and many other wonderful skins that he has created. Now this has nothing to do with the wonderful skin, but when I see a vehicle with a name like Defiance 3, it always makes me wonder what happened to Defiance 1 and Defiance 2 and do I really want to be around this vehicle? But I must admit that when I was a military police squad leader, we had three Humvees in the squad, and our call sign was Peacemaker, and the three Humvees were Peacemaker 1, 2, and 3. So, yeah, not always a bad sign. But I digress. Anyway, the medium tank M3 was an American tank used during World War II. In Britain, the tank was called by two names based on the turret configuration. Tanks employing U.S. pattern turrets were called General Lee, named after Confederate General Robert E. Lee. Variants using British pattern turrets were known as General Grant, named after Union General and President Ulysses S. Grant. Now, before the United States entered the war, the U.S. M2 series medium tank was typical of armored fighting vehicles many nations produced in 1939. And although not at war, the U.S. was paying close attention to the developments in Europe. The Panzer III and Panzer IV's successes in the French campaign led the U.S. Army to conclude that the M2 design with its 37mm gun and 32mm of frontal armor was obsolete. This led the U.S. Army to immediately order a new medium tank armed with a 75mm gun and a turret. This would eventually be the M4 Sherman. But until the Sherman could be produced, an interim design with a 75mm gun was urgently needed. The M3 was the solution. The design was unusual because the main weapon, a larger caliber, low velocity 75mm gun, was in an offset sponson mounted on the hull with limited traverse. The sponson mount was necessary because at the time American tank plants were incapable of casting a turret big enough to take the 75 millimeter gun. A small turret with a lighter high velocity 37 millimeter gun sat on the tall hull. A small cupola on top of the turret held a machine gun. Using a hull mounted gun, the M3 design was produced quicker than if a turret mounted gun design had been manufactured. The British need for equipment was mounting, with them losing much of their equipment and supplies on the beaches near Dunkirk. The British had requested that their Matilda and Crusader tank designs be made by American factories, but this request was declined. However, the U.S. was willing to produce, sell, and ship armored vehicles to Britain. British experts had viewed a mock-up of the M3 in 1940 and identified features which they considered flaws. But the British urgently needed tanks, and even though they considered the M3 flawed and were not entirely satisfied with the design, they ordered the M3 in large numbers. They did, however, request modifications for the tank they were purchasing. A bustle was to be made at the back of the tank turret to house the wireless set number 19. The tank was also to be given thicker armor plate than the original U.S. design, and the machine gun cupola was to be replaced with a simple hatch. With these modifications accepted, the British ordered 1,250 M3s as the Grant Mark I. The order was subsequently increased with the expectation that when the M4 Sherman became available, it could replace part of the order. 
The prototype was completed in March 1941 and production models followed with the first British specification tanks produced in July. Both the US and British tanks had thicker armor than first planned. The M3 brought much needed firepower to British forces in the North African Desert Campaign. After extensive losses in Africa and Greece, the British realized that to meet their needs, both tanks, the Lee and Grant types, would need to be accepted. Of the 6,258 M3s produced by the U.S., 2,855 M3s were supplied to the British Army and about 1,386 to the Soviet Union. British Lees and Grants were in action against Rommel's forces by May of the same year. Their appearance was a surprise to the Germans who were unprepared for the M3's 75mm gun. They soon discovered the M3 could engage them beyond the effective range of their 50mm gun, the main armament of the Panzer Mark III, their main battle tank. The M3 was also vastly superior to the armored vehicles employed by the Italian troops. Grants and Lees served in North Africa until the end of the campaign. Among the problems noted with the M3 was that the vehicle had a very tall silhouette and a low, hull-mounted 75mm gun which prevented the tank from fighting from a hull-down firing position. Both were tactical drawbacks. Overall, the M3 was able to cope with the battlefield of 1942. Long-range, high-velocity guns were not yet common on German tanks in the theater, and its armor and firepower were equal to or superior to most of the threats it faced. The rapid pace of tank development meant that the M3 was very quickly outclassed. By mid-1942, with the availability of large numbers of M4 Shermans and the upgunning of the Panzer IV to the long-barreled 75mm gun and further with the appearance of the Tigers and the Panthers, it was time to withdraw the M3 from service in the European theater. Now in War Thunder, the Grant Mark I is a rank 2 with a battle rating of 2.7. It has a 763 horsepower engine propelling the 27.9 ton vehicle to a top speed of 26.7 miles per hour. It comes equipped with the 37 mm M5 cannon as the primary gun and a 75 mm M2 cannon as the secondary gun. Now I have it assigned to an expert crew with a crew level of 140, which gives me a reload of three seconds for the 37 mm and about five seconds for the 75 mm. So when I say that the 37 mm is the primary weapon, um, I'm referring to the fact that by default the aiming reticle seems to be set for the 37 mm. However, when you start to take damage and your crew starts to replace themselves, they seem to favor the 75 mm. So it's a little bit confusing. It would seem to me that the reticle and the crew should favor whichever weapon is the primary weapon. And I'm not sure which one that is. So what do I think of the Grant Mark I here in War Thunder? Well, I like it. It's a good vehicle. It's basically the exact same thing as the M3 Lee, which you will find in the American Tree. It's very well armored for this tier, and it has a nice amount of firepower with the 37mm and the 75mm cannon. But you need to remember that the reticle in the default setting is set to the 37 millimeter which makes it very hard to use the 75 millimeter at a distance so to get the best use of this vehicle you need to go into the control menu to this page and select a key binding for select secondary weapon and select primary weapon and reset weapon selection if you do this then when you select the secondary weapon, the reticle will be set for the 75 millimeter, which makes it much easier to use that weapon 
um, in long distance shooting. And then you can switch back and forth. You can reset to the default. Um, just keep them close to where you don't have to move your hand that far when you're uh, switching between the two. So let's take a look at a couple of games and see how it worked out for me. Here we go. Okay, looks like we picked up Frozen Pass and we are on the southeastern side of the map. Got three cap points. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna select this southernmost cap point. Let me switch this ammo. I want the one with the HE filler to be, to be my default. That way I won't have to fire around at the beginning of the match. Okay, so I think I'm going to head down toward the B cap in the center. Um, for the moment, I'm leaving my gun selection as default so that I have the 37 millimeter uh, because I'm going to be rounding some corners. I might want to engage something quickly with the turret. Once I get set in position, I'm probably going to switch. Um, to having the secondary weapon, or not necessarily the secondary, but the 75 millimeter. So I'm gonna take up position right here around this rock if I can. All right, I got my 75 selected. So this is my 75 uh, millimeter reticle. I see some red on the mini map, but I really can't see anything to engage right this minute. A little bit of, there we go. What is that? Okay, so we got an enemy kill assist, and there's some more red over there in that general area, but I think they're behind that rock. Just trying to back up a little bit and see if I can see them. I don't seem to be able to take a look around this side over here. I'm setting my weapons back to default so that I have turret control. Because I may need to fire as I'm coming up over this hill a little bit. So let's just see. Oh, hey, here we go. 75. Kind of vulnerable sitting up here on the tail. I need to kill this guy. There we go. All right. I'm going to come up here in the cap. Oh, what do we got here? Nice. Got my 75 millimeter selected. Back to regular. Just switching back and forth. Got some arty. artillery fire coming in now the gun 75 is on the right hand side of oh dang it blew my tracks off well I hit him knocked his gunner out behind that rock I don't really have a shot on him See if I can hit him with the 37. Oh, 
one of those little rocket vehicles. Let's hit him with a 75. I missed him. 37. I've got both. Uh, I'm set to my default right now. I'm firing both. Just throwing rounds down range. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Oh, he bounced that. He didn't bounce that one. Alright, where are you? Little rocket vehicle. Have some of this. There you go. Okay, so it's like my commander is out. Tracks are a little damaged, but not off. Still have control of the turret. For now. Oh, shoot. Where did that come from? What do we got here? Okay. Oh no, bombs. And I got this. Shoot. The gunner's dead. Oh, let me switch. Switch to the 75. Oh, it bounced it. Let's try this flat spot right here. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Crew replacement is activating. I don't have control over that. Oh, man. Oh, excellent. Taking a pounding. That Timex watch. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. All right. Crew replacement is up, but I'm still damaged. Engine and turret, but I don't think I have anybody to man the turret anyway. So we're just 75 in it from here. Throw some party. Okay, so my 37 millimeter is useless from this point. But it served me well for a minute. What we got here? Okay, we took out his commander. I don't have a good shot. Hit the same spot. His commander was already dead from the last shot, so it didn't do anything. And try to drop down a little bit more, and I think it hit the. Oh! It's all over. There we go. So let's see what we did. Pretty much stayed in that cap point the whole game. Ooh, what's that? 70,000? Okay. Okay, picked up Supporting Fire, Avenger, Tank Rescuer, Multi-Strike, Professional, Shadow Strike Streak, Survivor, and Heavy Metal Fury. Uh, destroyed seven ground units to assist. First place in the team, 29,930 Silver Lions. Premium. Let's take a look here. Yeah. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and save it. 
Okay, so in that match we were able to hold down the B cap. We took a little pounding, but uh, this vehicle is pretty well armored for this tier and it can take a little punishment. Now I actually like to use this vehicle more like a uh, casement style tank destroyer, um, mainly concentrating on the 75 millimeter. So let's take a look at another match and uh, see what I was able to do, uh, kind of utilizing it in that role um, as a sniper. Here we go. Okay, looks like we picked up jungle. I can work with that. Three cap points. Uh, you know I'm going for the southernmost spawn point because that's just what I do. Alrighty. Looks like five seconds before we get to get into the match. Here we go. Where am I? Okay. Oh, calls on a traffic jam. Okay. So we're heading around to the southwestern side of the map to the hill over in that area. And I'm going to try to use that flanking position to bring some a supporting fire for the a cap I believe that is a side is not good enough to read what cap point that is but the one in the center of the map all right I'm gonna try to make a break through here it's not the fastest vehicle and sometimes you can get popped coming through here but I want to get over to this. Oh man, I hit a tree. Get over to this side. Get position in case I got some enemy uh, vehicles also trying to come over and take this flank position. But it actually looks pretty clear, so that's, that's good for me. So we'll go ahead and select up the 75 millimeter. What do we got here? Oh, got on a little ridge. Oh, and he bounced it. Engine compartment, that should stop him. And that should kill him. Got a little AI tank here. Put the stop on him. Move up to this one. Come back to this one. You know, I really thought that would have killed him. Gotta kill assist though. Who is this over here? Oh, missed him. Okay. Ooh. Almost hit that friendly. All right, we've got a nice hit on the T-34 there. Got some vehicles crossing the bridge. Let's see if I can bring some fire on them. Oh, I thought that would have been a one hit. Oh, we got him that time. Some more vehicles coming over here but I just don't have a shot on it because of the rock something something coming from behind I need to pay attention to let's throw some arty see if we can make him move a little bit couple of vehicles there. Is that a... Oh, I missed him. There we go.
All right, let's come back up here. See if we can support this cap some more. Oh, lots of red up there now while I was messing with that. There we go. There we go. Oh, tangy move just in time. Got a hit in his turret, which might help somebody take him out. Okay, we got the assist. Uh, he's gone behind a hill. What we got here? Panzer II hitting me with the 20s. Some Hardy. Got that guy. Oh, I so donked that shot. All right, let's make up for it. There we go. Oh, the Panzer II again. Oh. There we go. So this is all 75 action. Selected as my like the secondary weapon that way I've got this 75 millimeter reticle I'm able to put in some good good work with it let's see reach out and touch this guy I got a nice hit on him one more oh okay maybe one more there we go. Good long shots. And there we go with the 75. And got somebody else. Ooh, down here. Select up my 37. Fire just over this hill if I can. Okay, got a hit, but not much damage to him. Oh, something's freaking with my reticle. What is happening? I'm going to have to move. Party. Let's see if I can get a better aim in. Okay. Good hit. One more. Come on. Another good hit, but he hadn't replaced his crew yet. Not quite yet. We'll just keep hitting him. Crew will come in in just a minute. Any minute now, the crew's going to come in. And we're going to take him out. Hopefully. There we go. What hit me? Oh, man. Where'd you come from? You sneaky dog. All right, all right, let's go. All right, right here, right here, a little flat spot. Oh, you got away. Okay. We're lucky he didn't really kiss. I had no idea he was there. But he was going to go down. So I'd already screwed his crew up, but he got away. All right, so, Avenger, Multi-Strike, Supporting Fire, Professional, Shadow Strike Streak, Teamwork, Survivor, The Best Squad, Heavy Metal Fury. Not a bad haul there. 12 ground units destroyed, five assist. First place in the team. 42,931 that's the premium bonus I get all right so 10 of those 12 were players not too bad I don't think that's good enough for government work let's go ahead and save it
Okay, so the Grant Mark I, basically the exact same thing as the M3 Lee. So if you've liked the M3 Lee, you'll like the Grant. If you didn't like the M3 Lee, you're not really gonna like the Grant. So that lets you know uh, how it's gonna work for you. I like them both. I like to use them like a turretless tank destroyer. Seems to work out pretty well for me. Um, if you've liked this look at the Grant Mark I, hit that like button. If you didn't, don't. Subscribe if you would. But as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Nerd out.